Okay, I think we are okay. I'm terrified that my phone will drop. I'm having really not a good day. But I'm not here to vent, I'm here to talk about the 11 dating strategies that men use on, on women to get what we want, basically. So hello, my name is Greta Berishita. I'm dating and relationship coach for women. For the awesome high value women secrets, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I upload new videos every Wednesday and Sunday. And um, yeah, I'm not having a very good day. Um, I don't know what's happening. Everything is crashing. I'm going a bit insane. Anyway, we are not here to talk about me. So um, games, you know what is really interesting about games? And if your guy is playing a lot of games, then you know how to handle the game, the guy gets insecure. Have you, have you noticed it, ladies? Because in my YouTube channel, I talk so much about game playing, right? I give you all the strategies that guys use, how not to get manipulated. And you ladies who are dating guys who play like so many games on you, right? And you handle those games. Have you noticed that? that a guy usually starts to give either a bigger game after that or he comes to you all vulnerable and insecure. Because when the games don't work, the guy gets insecure, right? So it's kind of he's digging you a hole, but when you know how to handle it, he falls right in it, which is amazing because he obviously has, you know, he obviously deserves that. However, when he plays these games on you and we do work, and you start like giving him, you know, a show and you're overreacting, you're throwing tantrums, you're sharing your feelings, you're showing how upset you are, you know, like what happens then? Like um, he gets all the satisfaction, he gets all the security that the games are working and he gets so happy that um, you reacting to it because when you react to it, you show how much you care, right? So he gets really over the moon how much you care. It gives him a lot of satisfaction. And then he repeats his games over and over and over and over again until he starts to play you as a little Muppet and starts to get bored. Because, you know, when you throw something at somebody and we always jump, in the beginning, it's quite fun to entertain yourself. After a while, it becomes boring because you can read the person. So learn the games, uh, don't fall into their traps and watch them getting insecure because guess what? They will and <laughs> they do deserve that. I must say they do deserve that. Um, the best reaction to the games is no reaction. It's like, look at it as a child having a tantrum. You know, if you ever worked as a nanny, which I have, when the child is having a tantrum and he wants you to react and then you ignore him, that's like the best response. After a while, when he realizes that his manipulative games or tantrums doesn't work, he stops having the tantrum and he actually becomes nice to you. Or he will try harder. And when he tries harder, you kind of have to go a bit like, Oh, this is a bit getting a bit boring, right? So this is how you handle it. But anyway, in this video, I will share with you ladies um, 11 strategies in dating. And I kind of made little notes on them. To be honest, I filmed the whole YouTube video on it, which was like half an hour long. And then as I was editing it, I realized my camera, something is wrong with my camera. My microphone was crashing and I'm like, I'll have to do a live and share these games on a live because it's just not my day. And whoever gave me $10, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. So um, I seen that. <laughs> right. So the first game that I wanted to talk about is... Man used to do this a while back, and I remember guys used to do this on me when I was in my early 20s, 
but I didn't realize that in my early 20s. Now I came across this recently again and I was like, oh, I know what you're doing. So this is when the guy kind of test the waters. Are you easy? So that's number one, right? So are you easy? Will you get involved into our sexual talk? And we do it like some guys do it so gently that you won't even notice it, right? So for example, let's say you're taking a trip to the beach, right? And he's like, oh, so what you're doing today? And you're like, oh, I'm going to the beach, you know? And then a few hours later, he texts you something. Oh, how was the beach? Did you get a tan, right? And it's like the red flags, all of that should be already circling in your mind. Some guys will stop with that, but when you think about it, ladies, there is no reason to ask this question unless you have a sexual motif. So usually what you say, if you answer quite like naively or nicely, yes, I did. If his intentions are sexual towards you, the next thing he will say, oh, so do you have any tan lines? And then if you share it with him, oh, so where are your tan lines? And then it's like, oh, I bet you look hot in a bikini. Oh, do you have some bikini pics from the, be from the beach? Oh, would you like to have a video chat? You see how it kind of gently goes like that? So ladies, be wary of these things because like guys who are smart, they, they don't just go at you like, oh, do you want a hookup or do you want, you know, one night stand? We're going to test the waters gently, right? So we're going to be so gent-like that you won't even spot it like and in like half an hour or so or like a couple of days, you're already having these sexual talks with him without even realizing how did it actually happen. So be wary of these players and just stop the conversation ASAP. Uh, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, number two. Oh, this is quite obvious one. So um, getting you lots of drinks with no food on a date. Who had it like you go on a date and the guy doesn't order any food he doesn't order any nibbles he just gets that bottle of wine or he's just like trying to get you drunk the goal is like to get you drunk right so um i remember a couple well now it's like i don't know five years ago i think i think i went on a date and i was living in a house share and i come back and the guy that i was living in a house share with he goes like, oh, so how was your date? I'm like, yeah, it was cool, you know, it was actually really nice. And he's like, oh, so what did you do? And I'm like, oh, we just actually had a few drinks. He's like, did he got any food? And because he's a guy, you know, so he's like logically straight away thinks. And I'm like, actually, no, he didn't order any food or he didn't even suggest any food. And his face switched. He looked quite angry, <laughs> like, because he was like a caring friend. And he was so he, so he was trying to get you drunk. And I'm like, yeah, I suppose so. It didn't happen. I'm from Lithuania. It's not easy. It's not easy. I mean, I don't drink much, but it's it's not easy to get drunk an Eastern <laughs> Eastern European girl. It's practically impossible. So I know that's not a very high value thing to say, but it's the truth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the genetics are there, okay? So um, yeah, number two, he will try to get you drunk. Number three, um, let's see, if he walks you to, oh yes, this is very common. So if you're gonna let a guy to, you know, it's a first date, let's say, or a second or a third, and he walks you to the door, be very careful and don't let him to get inside your house. You know, um, sorry, ladies, I don't know what happens. When I start to talk, my nose gets so snotty. Um, don't let him get into your house. Don't invite him over. Like if you, of course, live in a more like in towns or countries where guys are a bit more nicer and a bit more genuine, 
I get it, that's fine. Maybe you can invite him for a tea, that's fine. And if it's not too late, but if it's quite late after a bad date and he is, you know, saying like, oh, I like, you know, and you're like not planning to invite him in and he's like, oh, I'm really thirsty or I need to use the loo or aren't you gonna invite me for some tea? You know, like reject all of these things. Don't let him get into your house because once the guy gets into your house and if you just met him a few times, it's really unsafe, it's really dangerous and you don't know anything about this guy and he will try, he's gonna try his best to basically seduce you and all of that. So, um, I would just say, don't let a guy in your house, leave him there outside your door, like stay safe. And if he's like, oh, aren't you gonna offer me any tea? Just be like, sorry, I ran out of tea. Um, can I like use your bathroom? Oh, it's dark, just go around the corner, <laughs> you know, and just do it, like say it playfully, like don't be rude with it, just be playful with it. And then just be like, okay, sorry, bye shut the door, he'll ask you out again. If you really wanted to get into that house, he'll ask you out again, so don't worry about that. Right, um, number four. <laughs> I'll do your questions, ladies, at the end of this video, once I'll say all the 11 dating game strategies that guys do. Number four, so this is kind of like, you know when guys invite you to their house and tell you like, come over, I will cook for you. So a lot of men pull out this card on the first date sometimes even, or the second date, um, especially in London. You know, if you met the first date for the drinks, a lot of time, the second date, we go like, oh, come over, I'll cook for you. Basically means you're gonna have, you know, like it's not gonna be just cooking, it's gonna be sleeping after. If again, you're in like these type of like big cities like that, where everyone's like a, a wolf, you know, a wolf, like literally we like wolves in sheepskin here. Um, so don't go over to a guy's house if you don't want to sleep with him. Then he says, I will cook for you because it's literally like, it basically he's saying, come on over, I'll charm you or I'll give you some food and then you're sleeping over. It's hard to get out of it and you're like, it's it's just gonna be way too soon. Saying that, I had a friend who, I remember I said it to him, like we were having the chat and I was saying like, yeah, if a guy like here invites you over, like I'll cook for you, it basically means you're sleeping over. And my friend actually got shocked because um, he was from Austria and he said like, I invite girls all the time over and I cook for them and it never means that. And I was shocked because I was like, wow, like in, in, in Austria, you still guys do it the nice way. Like, this is nice, you know, it's, it's I should move to Austria. <laughs> but usually it's like, I'll cook for you means. So just say to the guy something like, oh, you know, it's been a lockdown for the whole like a year and um, the sun is shining, the evenings are nice, I would prefer to do something outside. So kind of get out of there smoothly. And if he's into you and he's willing to wait for the act, <laughs> you know, um, he's gonna see you outside. Um, number five, very common, it's, it's all that vibe of live life to the fullest, life is short, enjoy the moment, right? So if you're in a club and a guy is chatting you out, like chatting you up, and let's say you're bonding, the conversation is going great, he's inviting you over and he's like, yeah, I love to, I'm that type of guy who's like really spontaneous and I love life and um, we just need to enjoy the moment because life is short, we don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. And a lot of girls get hooked into this. 
especially for guys like kind of into sales and he does it really really smooth and he looks into your eyes and he sounds all genuine and of course covers it all up with tones of compliments and how you were one and how you were most beautiful and how he never met a girl like you before and how he's looking for that serious relationship let's enjoy the moment blah 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 you wake up in the morning and uh, you think you're in a relationship <laughs> and he basically tells you to pack your stuff there are no breakfast nothing to be served and leave so ladies don't be naive this is very 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 common okay so taking go talking to about the next step number six love bombing and um I've seen so many videos of people like crushing, love bombing, like saying like it's the worst thing ever. I personally think this is the best thing ever. Like I think love bombing is fantastic. I think it's amazing. Please guys do more of that. These are my thoughts. Why? Because think about the past ladies when our parents did it, when your grandparents did it, when your grand-grandparents did it, what men used to do? They used to charm women. They would tell women how amazing they are, how beautiful they are. They would, you know, bring gifts and flowers to the family. They would write poems to them. Like, how many old movies have we watched where guys actually write poems to the girls right you're the most this and you're the most that and the songs songs are actually like romantic songs are the form of love bombing who doesn't love that i'm like the biggest sucker for that i love it you know but i would say enjoy it but don't be naive at that in the past when guys would love bomb them like that women would not sleep with those men you know, sex was after marriage. So like these guys would just charm and charm and charm and invest and buy gifts and impress and all of that it was all about love bombing, right? Obviously followed by action, but it was a bit more real at that time because he still wouldn't get anything unless he marries the girl. Whereas now we as women are so naive that whenever the guy writes a poem or just says, lots of sweet stuff or love bombs you we all just kind of like sign up for it and like sleep with the guy and it's just like you know so yes of course if you're gonna do that then you will look at him as the manipulator and he's just using you but if you're not doing that and you're letting him charm and invest and write all these poems and tell you all these sweet words and you're looking at his actions and not doing anything stupid and you're realizing that it's just kind of like you know it's like um like a fantasy that you're enjoying when there is nothing wrong with that and yes bring more love bombing you know so yeah it's like yeah nowadays guys are scared to keep to give these compliments because this love bombing image is made so bad um number seven so this is very common as well when men chat you up they create a kind of like um story of you together experiences of you having experiences together of you bonding together without even taking you on holidays or without you even spending any time together. So this can be done on online dating where you're just texting to one another, or this can also be done in real life. So what happens is you, let's say again, you're talking to a guy, you, let's say you like him, um, you, he likes you, you're bonding, right? And then he says, oh, have you been to Maldives or have you been to Bali? And because these are usually very popular locations nowadays to kind of go and visit. And you say, for example, no, I never been. Oh, you never been. Let me take you to Bali. We can feed the monkeys. We can see the elephant. 
and we can see these amazing waterfalls and I'm gonna take you there, we'll go there together, we're gonna have so much fun, we'll try all the different foods. The food is so amazing, let's fly there now. You know, so like he starts to describe to you about that holiday location that he's been to and he involves you in that holiday location. So without you even going there with him, he's already creating stories with you in there. He's already creating memories with you in there. And, uh, you know, you listen to the stuff and as a girl, you get hooked into the stuff, you know, it's like, oh, that would be so nice to go to Bali and it would be so nice, so romantic to feed these monkeys, you know, and to like touch that elephant and the food and the waterfall and, and the hotel and all of that and girls get in, you know, get sucked into that and we fall for the BS that basically he just met you but next week or the next day, you're already flying on holidays together. He's paying for everything, of course, right? And then again, you sleep with him too soon. And the next day, there is no Bali. And there might be a wife and couple kids involved as well. So ladies, again, don't be naive. Very, very, very common. Um, thank you, Julia. Right. Oh, this one is a good one. So number eight, very, very common, especially nowadays with online dating, uh, with the cool guys, right? So guys who kind of create a profile and they put their kind of like really good pictures on. So maybe he looks really good or maybe to like some fancy car or something else. And in the description puts in something like a, a business owner, a trader, like make something really cool, right? And looks really good as well, like at least in the pictures, right? And let's say you match with this guy, you match with him and he usually waits a few days to say hi because he's so cool, right? You should be texting him, you should not, but he assumes that you should be texting him because he's so cool, like what a catch. So let's say you're not texting him, he waits a few days and then eventually he says hi, right? And then you reply with hi and then he says something else and usually it's not a question for you, but it's more like a statement, like something that he's doing, it's usually a one line and just, just like a statement. Then if you're high value, if you know the games, you reply back with the statement as well. And the convert, like you share a couple more kind of dry lines, literally like dry messages, because these guys never charm you. They really don't care about charming you. And then after a while, after a few shared messages, uh, by the way, he takes time at responding, like ages, hours, days. After a few messages, he unmatches you. Why? Because nowadays, a lot of men are told that it's not their job to pursue women and that it's women that should pursue men and that they are kings, right? So they start to behave like kings and like he's just kind of putting himself out there and you're lucky if he matched with you and said hi to you and now you should be the one pursuing him. And if you don't pursue him, he's like, okay, I'm on to the next one because this is, you know, I'll just go to the next girl who's chasing me and who's putting herself on a plate, right? So he will unmatch you. The only way, if you are into kind of guys like that, some girls are, I don't know why, but some girls are. If you are into a guy like that, um, the best way to get a guy like that is um, if you meet him in real life. Because in real life, for a man to unmatch you or to move away from you, if he likes you, is much harder. It is much, much harder than for a woman to unmatch a guy or move, move away from him if you have a value and self-respect. Because if you think about it logically, again, we as women, we are not desperate for sex. 
we are not desperate for sex. We don't need it like guys do. They, you know, when he meets you in real life and he's really attracted to you, he likes your tone of voice, he likes your vibe, you have things in common, he is going to be much more careful at unmatching you in real life because he's really attracted to you. So then it's in real life, the possibility of this guy pursuing you is much, much higher than online, purely because men need women more. You know, we as women, we can't control ourselves. We're not desperate to jump on a guy. There's no need to jump on him there as man we feel that attraction we feel that chemistry we we are they will be much more willing to go after you in real life so yeah go out go to events go to places you know like take yourself out and if you like that type it will be there um right number nine long distance usually this is long distance although i had so many clients who had this exactly the same thing and not a long distance like where the guy was living in the same town there is uh i used to think like this is like long distance i kind of get it um like when you're in the same town to me that's just like completely absurd so this is what men do we uh chit chat we like pen pals right? So we talk to you online for a long period of time and we charming, we fun, we message you all the time, we give you lots of attention, we share lots of personal stories, we ask you to share lots of personal stories, you feel like you really, really bonded, like he's your bestie, right? And then eventually he meets you maybe three months later, if you're lucky. And when he meets you three months later, most likely you, and charms you when he meets you, most likely a woman will sleep with the guy at that point. Why? Because there was so much connection made through talking, you know, and we as women like, you know, yes, actions speak louder than words, but if you are naive, you will fall for the guy just from the words you know it's just like we all love you know like i'm for example i'm i know all the stuff i took that love language test guess what i got words i got words so of course you know like i know the stuff and i don't fall for this crap but if i get words and i know the games inside out you know, like we, we do fall for these words. These words are nice to hear, you know? So if you're talking, um, you know, you're talking, you're bonding all of that. And then when you meet with him and you feel like you're already in a serious relationship and you sleep with him, remember guys don't bond through talking too much guys bond through um, real life dating, through having fun together. It's really nothing about talking. It's like having fun together and creating those memories. So when you meet with a guy after three months of talking, look at it as uh, the first date. Will you sleep with the guy on a first date? Most likely not. So, you know, don't do anything stupid um, because it's just one of the strategies. And again, when it's long distance, I kind of understand that it takes a guy like three months to see you if he has to fly to you and all of that. But some guys do it in the same town. They give excuses to meet up because they kind of don't want to waste their time in dating you. And it's just so much less investment when he's talking to you, right? And it's just like, it's cheaper, it's less investment and you're bonding. You know, so when he meets with you, it's just like, it's, it's very simple. It's very simple for him to sleep with you. Because you'll feel safe, you'll feel bonded, you'll feel like he knows you inside out. And that's not the case. Look at it as the first date. Um, okay, number 10. Number 10. Um, my friend told me this. I have a lot of 
guy friends um but like you know <laughs> cool guy friends um and they kind of because i grew up in a really like athlete environment everybody was like a cool guy friend so i i know a lot of these stories so um anyway this guy is um he's very successful he looks incredible like he looks really really incredible and he's very successful and he's very charming and uh, the girls we always hit on him we always approach him you know because we see him as this cool guy and what he does so what he does when he invites a girl over and says i will cook for you he does not push a girl to have sex with him and he said it's a strategy that he has been using quite recently and um, it's because he wants the girl to think that he's a nice guy right so he cooks for her he charms her obviously the girl like he looks amazing he runs a big business you know he like everything about him is like so perfect right so the girl is like, wow, this guy is so perfect. He's such a gent. He cooked for me. He's so amazing. And uh, he's not pressuring me uh, to sleep with him. He says on the second date, usually it's that same girl pursuing and chasing him and like putting herself on a plate. And he said, um, Greta, usually I like do this with five girls a week. And they all think the same. We all fall for this strategy. Yeah, ladies. <laughs> yeah. He's not bad, to be honest. But it's it would take a really, really high-value girl to actually date him long-term. Because, like, guys play. This is another thing that I want you girls to understand. Obviously, what he is doing and what guys like him do, I don't approve on that and I don't advocate on it. And I think it's horrible, right? And men should never do this stuff. And this is just really horrible because all we're doing, we're using women. However, ladies, when you're smart and you're not naive and when you don't fall for these games and you stand your ground and you do it in a very polite way, in a nice and polite way, you know, these type of guys, we start to like you. We start, we want to know what's more. We can't read you. We can't know what, we don't know what you're thinking because we don't come across women like that. It's so easy to manipulate, you know, like, and we, we come across women that we can manipulate. It's like nearly every single time, you know? So when he's with you and he can't manipulate you, you know, he's thinking about you. He's thinking, it's interesting, it's intriguing, he's getting uncertainty. And through that, he starts to bond with you. He starts to fall for you. So, you know, like, when you're naive and he can play you like a Muppet, it all becomes very, very boring. And he just gets bored of you and goes on to the next one. Then he can't read you, but you're still nice and polite and you know you're friendly and you're nice, but you're like not sharing what you know. Yeah, you're winning girls. <laughs> you know, like these guys can really fall for you and when he falls for you, like they treat you like a superstar this same guy that i just told you about when he had a girlfriend like the way he was treating her i was like my, my jaw was just dropped i was just listening i was like wow you're amazing that was like my initial thought but when he doesn't have a girlfriend and the girlfriend and he is playing with girls dear god help god help the ladies you know because it's it's nasty um, 11. Number 11. That's the last one. And after that, I can take a couple of uh, questions. Number 11. And I know a guy who's doing that. And I have a friend who's, who went through this whole thing as well. So two people I know personally who went through this whole thing. And it is, he acts like your best friend 
right? So he is nice, he texts you all the time, he's extra caring, you're going out with somebody and he like checks on you. And uh, if you tell him that you're going with another guy friend, he seems a bit jealous and worried. And he asks you like when you're coming back and he texts you straight away when you're back just to make sure that you got back. And he's kind of like talking to you. And when he asks you out, he takes you on these beautiful dates and all of that and pays for everything. But he calls himself as your guy friend. Okay. So, um, so the guy that I know, when he told me this, he said, it's basically to see who will win. And he says, usually when I behave this way, um, the girl starts to make the moves. He says like, she cannot wait anymore. And I know she's attracted to me and she just starts to make all the moves. And he says, and then I just sit back and just watch her take the lead. And obviously, like guys, you know, when you take the lead, guys get bored and it's just on to the next one and it just gets boring. And um, with a friend of mine, she was seeing a guy like that, I think for a year or even two years, and he was perfect. And she was getting so many mixed signals uh, from him, but she did not make the first move. She did not make the first move. She just kind of went along with it. And he played this game for over two years until he finally asked her to be his girlfriend and they are in a very, very amazing and serious relationship now. So, but I know if she would have, if she would have taken the step first, I know he would have been turned off because it's like, ooh, game over, I won, on to the next one. So, um, okay, so here we go, the questions are coming. What to do if your boyfriend wants to marry you but wants you to propose, honey, you're old fashioned, okay? If he tells you, oh, um, really? Um, well, oh. if that would be happening to me, I would be really, I would really take the, Mickey piss, I would take the piss out of it. This would be like, uh, sh or I would like, you know, they're like, um, call the guy, oh, of course, my, yes, of course I'll propose to you, my princess. Will you wear a white dress? Will you wear a dress? Shall I dress up as a guy and you can wear a dress? Like, you know? Yes, of course, of course. I totally forgot that you're the princess in this relationship. Yeah, 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 sure. No worries, you know, I'll wear the pants and, you know, you can give him this answer if you want to banter. Or you can, if you don't, you can like say something like, uh, I'm old fashioned. I'm a bit old fashioned and no, I would never do it. So, yeah. <laughs> This is like, ladies, that's the best tip ever. When the guy asks you, <laughs> banter coach, when the guy asks you to do something manly, just call him a princess. Call him a princess or uh, say, oh, wow, I'm so lucky. What a gent. Like, you are just such a gent. You know, just like, wow, what a gentleman. Obviously, say it very sarcastically, right? So if he's like, you know, like, does something inappropriate and he's not acting like a gent should act, you can like drop it like, yeah, I was just thinking how lucky I am. What a gent I'm dating. <laughs> you know, like something like that. Um, yeah, I'll call him a princess, always works. <laughs> okay, any other questions? I'll take two more and then. I stayed in my feminine and didn't chase, that really works, good. My crush ghosted me for a year ago, for a year ago, but uh, is now messaging me. I still like him, but I don't know if I should give him a chance to a man who rejected me. Will it lower my value? Um, it depends. Why did he ghost you a year ago? Did he ghost you? Ha like, have you been high value? Is it too dark? Am I too dark? Why is it so dark? 
I'm scared to press like here, but anyway, I'm scared to press anything because sometimes it just goes off. So if a year ago he, uh, you were a bit acting a bit naive and immature and, uh, you know, and you were naggy and clingy and texting him a lot and chasing him a lot. And now, um, you know, and he ghosted you, then it kind of makes sense why he ghosted you. But if you have been high value and he just didn't want to pursue you and now he's back a year later, you know, like then if I have been high value a year ago and he didn't want to pursue you, I would be considering would I give him a second chance or not? Um, maybe, but keep your options open and just see what happens. Because sometimes people change, you know, like I changed so many times through these five years. It's, it's insane, <laughs> you know, so people change. Some people don't change. Some people stay the same. Other people change. So you could give him another chance. But um, if a year ago you were low value and now you're high value and your crush is coming back, then I would definitely give him a second chance because he did not see the high value you, you know? And once a guy starts to see the high value you, of course, his attraction towards you starts to grow. And then there are many possibilities for many things. Okay. Right, uh, let's see. We, let me see. When, a man, when men disappear for more than two weeks, this is a game, or we just move on. Usually if a guy, like technically, if a guy has the guts to disappear on you for more than five days, a week, or two weeks. And let's say you know for a fact that he has really strong feelings for you. It's usually because he thinks he is the bomb. You know, he thinks he's so amazing and that you're just gonna be waiting for him. Um, or he knows how much you love him and he just thinks you're gonna be waiting for him or he's watching, let's say, somebody online who's saying, you know, don't text her, don't chase her, punish her by disappearing on her for a week or two weeks and she'll never forget you because you want as a girl what you can't have, which is insane. It's not how it works. Women need safety and security. Our love need is safety and security. We're looking for protection and to feel safe and secure. Men are the ones who have testosterone and they look for uncertainty. So what, what a lot of men advise men, it, it does not make sense. It's, it goes anti-nature, even anti-science, you know, but a lot of guys fall for this crap because we don't know the science behind it. We don't know what, you know, the nature behind it. So, um, and then we give women those like two weeks of no contact because we think that the woman will start to chase and pursue him after or he thinks I'm just such a like such a catch that if I'll give her two weeks of no contact, of course she's gonna wait for me. My advice for you ladies would be if a guy doesn't contact you for let's say five, six, seven days and eventually gets in contact with you, I would just say to him it's not working for me because if you're not gonna say anything, he will do that again. He will 100% do that again and you'll do that no contact longer. So, you know, but in order to say this is not working for me, of course you need to have a lot of value and self-worth and just not be willing to put up with this crap. You know, so if you think you're gonna say him like this is not working for me, and then he doesn't chase or text you after and you're like running after him, begging and pleading, then that's the worst case scenario, you know, cause that way you're definitely coming across really sad and very desperate, you know, and that's like a massive turn off. So if you don't have the guts to say, this is not working for me, then my advice would be just kind of suck it up and don't say anything. You know, like just don't say anything, act like you haven't even noticed because you've been so busy 
that he's been gone for like five or seven days you know so at least that way you're not nagging or complaining and he'll get a bit intrigued why you're not going crazy over this but it's you know i personally would just i done all of this i have been ignoring and basically like in the past i would ignore something like this because i used to assume that we just not gonna do it again but we do it again and then you're like shit i should have broken up the first time you know so it's just like the ignoring does not really work you know it's like we just do it again so now it would be just done and dusted and it's like it's just so much easier it's so much easier because you're not waiting around you're not sitting on a fence the worst thing for me personally is like not knowing where i stand with a guy so if i feel like i'm sitting on a fence like i would always step back you know i would be like this is not good enough i'm, I'm done with you if you're not making me feel secure and like if you're not showing how much you're into me and not making me secure i'm done with you because for me the worst thing is to sit on a fence i can't stand that and i know from my character and how i have been like i know i'm very feminine so i love sweet words i love security i love all of that so when people say like you know the, the advice to the guys is give them uncertainty it's like you're done <laughs> you're done i i don't know how it can even work on some women it, it just doesn't i just don't get it like and yeah so i think it's like the advice that some men give to other men i just think it's like like which tree did you fell from you know so yeah ladies um yeah yeah he ignored me on Christmas, his birthday and Valentine's, poor me back when wanted things to work so much, I still went back to him. Yeah, a big red flag. Guys, um, so yeah, I done a video on it, so you probably watched it, right? When a guy ignores you on your birthday, Christmas, Valentine's, um, or we'd kind of drop in like this kind of cold message, like happy birthday, that's it, or like Merry Christmas, Happy New Year happy valentine's but we actually don't do anything we don't buy you a present we don't take you out we don't make the day special for you you are not um a girl you know you're not a girlfriend material in his eyes um you know ladies where i would say majority of you have a chance for a relationship is if you're let's say you're let's say you're talking to a guy a lot and you feel like you really like him and he really likes you and you're bonding a lot right let's say you're bonding a lot a lot and you a lot of spend time together a lot and you get sexual and all of that but he is not making you into a serious girlfriend and you're like not getting it you're like okay we bonding we like besties and you know the sex is great and like why is he not making me into this girlfriend and it's usually because you're not letting him to pursue you it's usually because you freak out if he doesn't message you for three or four days, you know, or you start to, or you try and control him. Where are you? Who are you with? Or you start to pressure him. Like, where is this going? Who are we? And things like that. So if you're in a situation like that, all you need to do is just kind of reflect back on your relationship and just um, think about it. Am I behaving high value or not? And if you're not, just fix the places where you're behaving high, uh, low value into high value and most likely you're going to be able to turn this around. This is like nearly the easiest relationship to turn around. I think this type of relationship always has a chance because if he is with you and he's talking to you a lot and the sex is great and everything's great but he's not making you into that girlfriend, it's just because you're lacking some things about you're just not really knowing the differences between men and women and ladies if you want to know where you're lacking and making mistakes of course you can book me through my uh, website for one-on-one -on -one, or you can join one of my incredible vips uh, vip is much cheaper than one-on-one -on -one with me and i'm there coaching you personally with other coaches giving you advice telling you what to fix what works what doesn't by doing live streams like that 
and answering your questions uh, during the live stream. And then the lives get shared and you can re-watch it and all of that. So if you're thinking or planning to join my VIP, I will put the link in the video description how to do that. And again, one-on-one -on -one in the video as well, in the video description as well. So ladies, that would be it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for popping on. Um, yeah, I really had fun. I really had fun. I had such a stressful day. I was going, well, I had some, you know, had some valerian drops today because I was really anxious. Like, it's just like everything has been crashing. Nothing has been going right this week. I was like, but this life went really well. I'm very happy with it. So ladies, have a beautiful day. Kisses. And again, for one-on-one -on -one or any kind of packages, everything is in my bio. Have a good day.